mini shaker cards like this can be daunting because there's so many little pieces to think about putting the foam behind if you want to separate the colours of your gems or the shape of them, whereabouts they fall. But I've found probably the easiest way and I'm going to show you today how to do this and what to use. So what you're going to need to make these really fun mini shakers is a die, a cover plate die that's going to create a shaker kind of border for you. I'm going to be using my Textures Overlapping Circles die set. This is one of my first ever releases. Um, I absolutely adore it as a background. So I've cut this. Now I'm not going to make a full A5 card. That's going to take way too long. Uh, I'm going to make an A6 size card or if you're um, in the US, A2 size. So I've actually die cut this die twice, once from black cardstock and once from the top layer, which will be mirror card, silver matte mirror card. And I've cut the die in half for both. So they're exactly the same size, but I'm working with a much smaller die now. So I've got those. Now, depending on the design, and I will explain this in a little while, you might need either a craft knife or some fussy cutting scissors. You're going to need the small gems that you're going to want to put inside your shakers. And you're going to need some of these foam sheets. Now, these come in both white and black. These are the Creative Craft Products range, so they are adhesive on both the front and back these can be die cut as well so you'll see how much easier these make creating the shakers so these sheets come in a five so I'm going to trim this down in half just ever so slightly larger than half just so that I don't make it too small and I'm going to die cut this using my die so you just place it on either side there and um, kind of you can flip it but either way the sides are exactly the same the backing sheet and I am going to tape this down now with foam foam cuts through beautifully with a die and so so quickly as well so you only ever need to die cut this through once you never want to run it back through again because you will always or almost always kind of repeat cut or double cut and then you're left with lots of wispy bits around the edges and um, we don't want that so I'm going to place this into my machine with the foam facing upwards there. I plate on top and die cut it in the same way as I would if I was die cutting cardstock or paper. So I can see here this has die cut through absolutely beautifully. So I can release the outer edge and everything from the die. Now what's going to happen is um, usually with foam a lot of the pieces will remain where they were now i obviously overlaid my tape here so that's peeling off a bit of the backing but that's fine and to take this carefully at the corner keep it all in one piece if you can so now i'm going to lift up the backing from one side and i'm only going to lift up the design i'm not going to be peeling off the uh, inside pieces right now so although my paper has creased a little it's still quite easy to lift away. So I've peeled off the uh, backing, just the design from the foam, and I've placed my black die cut over the top of that. So that has just now secured the foam. So the foam's now not going to move about anywhere we don't want it. And now we can remove all the little pieces from inside. So far, I've only removed the centers of the circles, not the overlapping pieces yet. Um, but this next part is optional. Now, if you've got a design that has reasonable sized uh, areas for you to do your mini shakers in or your little windows, then that's fine. You can carry on popping all the pieces out and move on to the next stage. But if, like me, you think these are a little bit small, what you actually would like is each colour shaker or each group of shakers within a circle instead or something similar. So I'm actually going to just use the circles there for the shakers the full ones so I won't use these middle rows but I'll use this row this row this row this row for example um, and also this is going to work if you're looking at something like a flower and you actually want to have your shakers just in this whole area here this whole area here and maybe just all the leaves you can actually snip out the detail from the middle so I'm going to do that using some fussy cutting scissors and I'm doing that at this stage because while the backing's on the sticky it's actually much easier to work with. So I'm going to go around each of the circles and just snip through the adjoining pieces on the edges. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two let's just pop that up there and then the same three and four now you can do this with scissors or you can do this with a craft knife just neaten up any pieces you want we are going to neaten this up with the final overlay so don't worry too much I'm going to go around the whole design snipping the insides of the circles out so now I've cut away all the pieces that are kind of in the way of the shaker windows so I'm left with a more basic image it looks a little bit messy because some of the backing has started coming away in places um, but that's fine it's all going to be covered over so don't panic if at this stage you think oh it's such a mess so now we're going to peel off that backing or what's left after you've um, cut away and basically you've now got your foam template um, this isn't going to move around too much because you've got the cardstock on the front that's the whole point of putting a cardstock base over the front at the beginning so take the backing off the remainder of the backing off and then place it onto your cardstock or your project now the reason I've used black foam here is because it's going to give me a really nice drop shadow when I've finished. So I'm now going to take my um, small embellishments. These are the smallest ones that I have in my stash. Um, and I'm going to go from a white at the top. Now I can fill two lines of circles with the, they're white, they're sort of iridescent. So just a couple of little shaker elements in each of the circles. Now I'm going to run a bead of glue around these circles, around the design. And I've got a sheet of acetate that's going over the top. Now I've let my glue go a little bit tacky first so that there's not too much spread um, I don't want to sort of squelch this out and be able to see the glue too much so I'm just going to sit that on there really gently and allow that to dry and while that's drying I'm going to add some spray adhesive to my top layer this is going to make everything look neat and tidy again And once all your glue is dry that will be clear and you've got your mini shakers in each little compartment keeping the colours separate. Like I say if you've got a flowered outline dye something similar this is going to work really really well. It is a little bit fiddly but this I've found is just the easiest way of doing a mini shaker like this. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you've got any other ways of doing shakers or if you're going to be trying this out. The uh, circle overlapping circles dye that I've used I will link just up here I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel as well and I think you're also going to like this video just here too take care everybody I'll see you again very soon